Tesla's share price has hit historic lows. When you compare the company's earnings to its actual price right now, it's the best price it's ever been in the history of the company, but something is about to happen. Something that I don't think anyone is factoring in. People keep saying Tesla is just an auto company. That's all they are. That's all they should be valued at. But well, the evidence says otherwise. The evidence in fact says something entirely, entirely different. And it doesn't matter if you're a Tesla fan or not. The evidence, my friends, is still the evidence. Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. My name's Sam Evans. If you're new to the channel, there's a good chance you are because, well, 10% of people just subscribed within the last 28 days. Make sure you check out some of the 1,500 videos we've created over the past 18 months. I don't believe there's any other YouTube channel out there that's done that many videos trying to help you guys understand what's really going on in the automotive market, in the battery market, in the global market, in the world. You know, you get the point. You get the point, I'm sure. Tesla are currently operating the world's biggest battery. You probably didn't realize that, or some of you I'm sure did. But really, it's a virtual battery. It's not a real battery. It is a real battery, but it's a virtual battery. But yeah, okay. The Tesla virtual power plant is technically the world's largest battery. And Tesla technically makes money from people for nothing. That's technically true. I mean, Tesla actually just made 1.4 billion this year. Well, not yet, but by the end of the year, well, they'll have made 1.4 billion for nothing. And that's for taking money from other car companies. Thank you very much, other car companies. If you're stupid enough to still be producing gas cars when you knew the writing was on the wall years ago, then it's your own fault. But Tesla's also going to be making money for nothing here with the virtual power plant in California. But Tesla said, no, 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 no. That's not enough. We're going to do the same thing in the UK. We're going to do the same thing in Australia. We're going to do the same thing in Texas. Yes. And the thing is, you're probably thinking, well, yeah, that's all well and good. But, you know, Tesla doesn't make that many power walls or big batteries. Well, they now have a big factory. They're producing a lot more batteries than they were in the past. Those batteries are going to be a much higher margin product because they now use lithium ion phosphate cells, which are much better quality. There'll be less recalls, much bigger margins because those cells are much more affordable and they can produce a lot more. CATL is a much bigger battery company than Panasonic. Those LFP cells come from CATL. And I think Tesla will get some as well from Groshon High Tech once that big battery factory is finished in the United States. I know, I know, yeah, I know. They haven't started it yet, but I'm sure they will very soon. So what's happening in Texas? The Electric Liability Council of Texas, ERCOT, Board of Directors unanimously approved a pilot project that allows Tesla virtual power plants, VPPs. Tesla's US energy markets policy lead, Arushi Sharma Frank, has been working tirelessly with the Texas Utility and the Texas Public Utility Commission to make this happen. Here's what Arushi said. The ERCOT ISO Board of Directors unanimously approved the aggregated DER pilot project. This is a great big historic moment for Texas. It will drive demand for DER's retail competition and prove out the technology solutions needed for a resilient grid. Imagine if this was around when Texas had its massive snowstorm and the grid was down, right? Imagine if, you know, say 30% uh, of the grid was able to use this. Well, that would have been a big improvement over the situation they had then. So this is kind of like Tesla's get in card. Now, if you're wondering what I'm talking about, you're thinking, yeah, that's all great. What the heck are you talking about, Viking? Well, a virtual power plant is this. Tesla sells the consumer a battery. The consumer then installs the battery and they connect it usually to solar, right? Not always, but usually they connect it to solar and then they use it for their own energy needs. But if they sign up to Tesla's virtual power plant network, then what they can do is that homeowner can say, well, you know what? I'm not using most of my energy in my battery or I'm using some of it. What I want to do is make some money out of this battery system. And some people are making enough money to pay off their battery system within a couple of months. Seriously, that's how crazy, that's much money you could make. Not necessarily is that going to happen to you in Texas. Not necessarily will that happen to you in California because you need certain events. You need like the grid going down, then the energy network, then the virtual peaker plant that you have, your battery, the energy from that battery will be sold at an extremely high rate, rates up to 200 times the cost of the normal cost of energy. 
That's how you make your money back real quick. And it does happen everywhere. In, in fact, most states of America, they have these downtimes where Pika plants jump in and that's where the virtual power plant comes in. It basically operates as a virtual Pika plant. So Pika plants are these generally massive gas-fired plants, sometimes coal, but gas is better at sending quick energy into the grid. Super expensive to pay for that energy. Grid, the grid will pay enormous amounts of money for that energy, but it does take a couple of hours for those Pika plants to jump in. Tesla's virtual power plant is way better for the grid because not only is it renewable energy, but that energy can be supplied within about a minute to the grid. The Pika plants, the gas powered ones, normally take a couple of hours. So that's why the battery system is much better for the grid and it's good for consumers. They make money out of their battery, they sell energy back to the grid and Tesla makes a cut of that sale for nothing. Tesla just had to create the software, which they did years ago. And now they basically make money out of everyone who signed up to the grid in California. And of course, the number of people who sign up increases every single day. Tesla is ramping up its number of power packs that it produces. And it's also looking at making massive amounts of money from its enormous battery packs, which it's installing at its supercharger locations all around the United States. So Tesla will essentially pull energy out of the grid when it's cheap, say at two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning, put it into its big battery pack, then sell it to consumers at peak rates during the day. That's another way Tesla makes money. So if you think that's just an automotive company, um, you haven't been paying attention. So Tesla's plan is to actually launch these virtual power plants all over the US, all over Australia, all over the UK, probably all over Europe, probably all over most parts of the Western world where, ex where energy is expensive. Now imagine if Tesla had these virtual power plants in Europe right now. It would be making literally millions, hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars selling energy back into the grid. I'm guessing its plan is to do exactly that eventually. The approval for a distributed energy resource or DER pilot project allows virtual power plants in Texas and Tesla owners as well as employees have worked together to make this happen. This is a good thing, it's a win-win. It's a win-win for Tesla owners and it's a win-win for Tesla. They make money out of basically nothing. Gail Alpha, who owns a Tesla Model Y and Model 3, said this at a meeting about it. Frank noted Gail's remarks were probably one of the most cathartic, heartfelt that the board has ever heard. We all have to remember that there is a big cost to having a slow, unadaptable electric grid. We need to do better. And seeing as this is coming right after the enormous grid shutdown that happened in Texas, I think Texas is definitely ready for a virtual power plant. It's ready for a solution. This is the solution. So it's actually a win-win for everyone, consumers, Texas itself, people who own power walls, and Tesla. Tesla had been working with the PUC and ERCOT in hopes of enabling homeowners with Tesla power walls to participate in VPPs. By approving this, the utility will be able to reduce the stress on its fragile grid by allowing for extra renewable energy generated to be sent to the grid. In June, Gail shared a deep dive and she pointed out that Tesla had been working with ERCOT since 2020 and it's supporting the state's efforts to improve the resiliency and innovation of the grid. Now, John Asada points out that this is really more evidence of Tesla's next level chess strategy thinking. General Motors, they've seen what they're doing here, Tesla's doing, and they're like, well, actually we wouldn't mind copying that. That sounds like a good idea. Tesla clearly thought of this years ago. And yet still, still seeking alpha and all these other cnbc all these other clowns i still say tesla is nothing but an automaker nothing but and that's all they should be valued at well personally i don't agree i think the evidence says otherwise now even if you don't think robotics or automated cars will ever work for tesla it doesn't matter they're already still far more than just an automaker I firmly believe Tesla's strategy and their plan is to become the largest electricity supplier in the world. Eventually, yeah, it's gonna take a long time, but that's their plan. Whether or not they get there, I don't know. But even if they become one of the five biggest in the world, well, that's more than enough. And think about this. Tesla is selling more EVs than any other car company in the US by a factor of, it's massive. They have, what, nearly 70% of the EV market in the United States. Every single EV they sell, that is another customer that they can just sell one of these two, one of these products. 
someone who buys one of these, someone who buys a Tesla EV, will be more likely to buy a Tesla Powerwall. And they're more likely to recommend one of those two products to their friends. This is one of the reasons why Tesla doesn't have to do any marketing. It does it for them. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, my friends, and I'll see you again on the next video. Bye-bye.